Сего не меня, и по нелядею, беди мию, и нара, о моем твое, о ва, о ди. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a strong tower, the righteous run it unto it, and they are saved. Hallelujah. Oh, Udimina, Kipo, and Adeo, Bidimio, Nidarama, Ayapara, Udimina. We shall pray the Lord and bring ourselves before his strength. Yes, we shall pray that Lord, please come and lead us this morning. Commit yourself into his hand and tell him to come and wash you, to come and sanctify you. That even as you come before him, his presence will touch you, his hand will touch you. If there be anything that will hinder his presence, may the Lord just cleanse us with his blood. That as we come, even our worship, our praises, will reach his throne of mercies shall we pray the lord somebody wherever you are just pray and bring yourself before the throne of grace in the name of jesus it is time of worship just gather your children gather your your brothers and sisters gather your friends and sit together to worship the name of the lord don't be distracted from the things of the house it is time to spend time with jesus and therefore for the next one and a half hours, no movement. Just stay in your living room or stay in your bedroom or wherever you find yourself. And worship without the truth and in spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commit myself to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, the Lord. If there be anything that will end the Lord, you use me to your glory. I pray the Lord, you be merciful upon me and wash me, Lord. Cleanse me and dip me in your blood in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord God Almighty in Jesus' name. This morning service will be a blessing unto me and my family, O oh God. That this morning blessing will give me direction in the name of Jesus. Word. Touch everyone that is oh, worshiping with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Word. Heavenly Father, let your blood cleanse us in the name of Jesus. Come and take the higher place in our midst, Lord. That in the name of Jesus this morning, our worship in the name of Jesus will be acceptable unto you. Our sacrifice of praise, O Lord, will be acceptable unto you. And you will touch us, O oh, each and every one of us, wherever we find ourselves. Oh yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We shall pray the Lord one more time. And even bring the service one more time to his hand and tell him lord come and lead us lord come and give us anointing come and anoint the preacher this morning that in the time that we are living you give us your word that will give us direction oh god your word that will give us protection oh god your word that will give a revelation oh god that our hearts will not be shaken that fear will be out of our way but lord jesus Christ, our uncle will hold in your word alone shall we pray the lord shall we pray the lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that your presence alone will lead us in Jesus' name. Come and give us revelation, O oh God. Come and give us, Lord Jesus, your word, Lord, that will be with us and that will lead us and that will direct us in his times, O oh God. It is times of confusion around the globe. It is only upon your word that we find. Oh God, solace. It is only upon your word that our faith, Lord Jesus Christ, will be hooked. And Lord Jesus Christ, no wave, Lord, will be blown us down. Father, come and take your glory this morning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus. Oh. 
you have counted us Lord to be alive this morning father it is not anything that we have done it is amazing grace Lord that has touched us is amazing grace Lord that you have shared upon us as we gather together Lord we come in the service your hands Lord I commit every brother every sister anybody that is listening to us online on Facebook Lord that father your presence will be with each and every one of us Lord we will feel the power of the Holy Ghost even as we praise your name and even as we sit to hear your word Lord come and give us revelation Lord come and heal our sicknesses and diseases Lord come and grant unto us our needs in the name of Jesus Christ that before the service come to an end we will have testimonies in our hearts to give unto you Jesus Christ we bless you we worship you and the saints of God shall shout Amen Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, give him a clap offering wherever you are. Give him a clap offering wherever you are. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our songbook and sing him 198. Amen. Get your songbook. If you don't have your songbook with you, just get your songbook. And I want you to write these numbers down. I want you to write the numbers down. The song numbers down. Just write them down. These are the songs that we are going to sing. I just want to give it to you ahead. So that when we are singing in medley, you can follow us. So write song number 198. I'll be singing 198. I want to sing 207. I'll sing 207. So write it down. And I'll sing 234. 234. And I'll sing 
again 253 so the song that we are going to sing is 198 209 234 and 25a so get your songbook and as we sing just sing along with us from your home amen is it the closing days of time indeed the signs are showing that our lord jesus is coming soon and we need to draw close to him we need to make things right with him because he can call us at any time Close in days of time. Oh, watch out the glorious so powerful. Say that Oh, wow, not you sublime. Oh, he shall reign, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, he's coming, 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 he's coming,
stream of blood and we apply it onto our bodies and onto our doorposts then the death angel will fly over amen hallelujah before we sing the next song i want to announce to you one more time that any service without offering and tithe is incomplete amen and therefore as we as we take our mobile phones and take our offerings i want you to pray upon your offering and we'll be announcing the numbers just send your offering to the number hallelujah <laughs> pray over your offering just take your offering and pray over it take your phone and pray over it pray over your offering as you give to the lord may the lord give unto you it's a good measure press down shaking together will men give unto your bosom and I, therefore as you give your offering may the face of the lord shine upon you that in these difficult times you will not 
be hungry. Amen. The phone numbers are 024-343-5672. 024-343-5672. Just take your offering, pray over it. And let's take our offering as we sing hymn number 385. Not 83, then 385. 83, let's sing 83 first. <laughs> i 
Take over the pulpit, let's bow down our hearts and let us expect that the Lord would touch us with His word and let us open our hearts and tell Him to give us understanding. It is only by understanding that we can go through this difficult time. If you have revelation upon the word of God, you will be able to redeem the times. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, ancient world, and changing me and changing you. Sing word of God, 
stepping stones out of stumbling blocks where man is down that's when you bring a lifting up you are the only God when Satan comes in the form of a flood you always raise a higher standard a standard where you lift your children up to that standard the plants of the enemy cannot touch them so we are grateful to you when there's pandemic there's fear People are running up and down, confused. Father, we know you have lifted us above fear. We are in certain heaven places with you, with you, Christ Jesus, as kings, rejoicing with you, even in these moments of difficulty, when the whole world is almost in a total shutdown. We thank God that the world is in a shutdown, but our hearts cannot be closed, neither can it be shut down. We thank God that you have opened our eyes, you have opened our hearts to hear your truth and your revelation. And we are grateful to you for what you are about to do for us, Father. Over and above what the world expects. We thank you, O Father. For in all things you say we should give you thanks. And who are we to do otherwise? We are grateful to you. We thank you that this moment the presidents, politicians, above every name. That people are now looking up to the skies. And nowhere else. For you are the foundation of this world. On you. And you are the solid rock. We lean on you Father. And I know nothing will touch us. We thank you. Our hearts go for the poor. The underprivileged. The vulnerable in society. Who in this trial moment. Do not even have food to eat. Do not have, have money. One city even in their pockets. But Lord you are the one who will take care of them. May you open doors for them Lord. As you open doors even for Elijah, when he was on the mountain top, you send ravens to go and feed him. Oh dear Lord, we pray that you find a way for them, Lord. That they can all fend for themselves in these trying moments. And that hunger will not even kill many. May you do this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. For coming along with us on this Sunday. It's a precious Sunday. Uh, today we might not come to you uh, from now with interpreters. I think Thursday we did it without interpreter. And today too we will be mixing it. Um, short announcements. We will come to you on Tuesday. Although there's a lockdown for two weeks, please. There's no lockdown of our house. The president has not locked down our Bibles. In fact, he dare not and he cannot. He cannot. Because if he dares lock down our Bibles, then there will be defiance on the face of the earth. I thank God your hearts have not been locked down. So notice that in these difficult times, he said, when you see these signs, men ought to fast and pray. Fasting. But now you are the pastor in your home. Those who are married, the men, you are pastors at home. The women, uh, take yourselves as people must also take charge of your prayer lives not only about coronavirus for coronavirus i've said several times to go away it will melt although there was a prediction a prophecy that it will melt yesterday we are uh, that was friday but it's now a fiasco 
You see, in these trying times, it's when you see uh, uh, the hand of God. And in these trying times, it's when uh, you know the difference between the prophetic calendar and the gift of prophecy. The prophetic calendar has preordained, it's preordained uh, before the foundation of the earth. And nobody can stop it. Uh, uh, prophecy cannot cancel uh, the prophetic calendar. These things are bound to happen and they will happen in great magnitude from now onwards. I was telling my wife this morning that the world has changed forever yeah. and from now the world is not going to be the same because uh, what is happening has lifted the world to another level, a level that the political authorities themselves are now taking a cue. And what is important is that I miss all these things. Maybe Christians are missing something. The political authorities have been given immense powers. And it's a trying moment. They are trying their powers and authority. Immense powers of totalitarian type. Political authorities are not exercising. There's presidents all over the world speaks and they know that people will listen. When they speak, people move into homes. Two week lockdown and everybody will be at home. I bet you uh, we look on the street of Ghana. Look on the street of Italy. Look on the street of America, New York. Most, you will not see anybody. And the military are now going to exercise their power. The police are going to exercise their power. So, after this, it's going to be the norm. Yeah. Yes. And people should be prepared. That the world has entered into a different realm altogether. The economic situation is not going to be the same. There are going to be hard times. Very difficult moments. Perilous times. I'm telling you, if you don't have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, I'm telling you, you give up. Already, most people are giving up. Um, I've heard a lot of prophecies that people are giving uh, through social media. What's up? Um, uh, moving all over. There's a hair in the Bible. Uh, I'm receiving it all over the place. And I've seen there's panic and fear in people who are kotowing to such prophecies. Because, you know, let me tell you, in difficult moments like this is when Satan oppresses the most. And therefore, be prepared. It's only those who are standing on Christ, the solid rock, who can understand these things. And you know that there's nothing anybody can do about such situations because it's a prophetic event. It must happen in line with the Bible. And you must stay with the word. In difficult moments like this, don't look to the left, don't look to the right. The only solution is that stay with the word. Before, if you don't stay with the word, uh, the world will push you to the world yeah. and that will be the end of you when you go like this that's the end because people are looking for solutions and i'm telling you, there's no solution anywhere apart from what the word says stay with the word bride of christ don't fear fear not little flock stay with the word stay with the truth stay with the messages wherever you are this time to read enough message books if you have never read before it's a time of learning two weeks of learning learn and learn very hard I know the Lord will bless us. In 161, the day of redemption is near. Bumi on to nyum o ha edu siamba ko se emrena o jemreno abeni o bie nyina na nyanku ponsa ewo yeso. Oh 
soon will unfold and the chorus said the day of redemption is near men's hearts are failing for fear and it gives a solution here it said be filled with a spirit with spirit the spirit of God for your and trim your lambs make your lamp trimmed and clear and it said look up your redemption is near that's the solution as fear is gripping the whole world and nations are breaking as countries are almost folding I was hearing the IMF boss saying that the world is gradually almost at the verge of entering into an economic recession that's a very serious one when the world enters into an economic recession oh my oh my the poor and the privileged the vulnerable, especially in a third world country like Ghana, there's going to be too much trouble. Not only that, I was reading yesterday, Gordon Brown, the former British Prime Minister, is moving that the world leaders must come to go together to form some kind of uh, world order to bring about controls in the system. And I've seen many people, even in the message, confused whether we are in the great tribulation or whether the rapture has happened. I said, no, no, we are not nowhere. This is 0 0.0000000, 000 000 000, about 1,000, 1 percent of what there lies ahead of us. Maybe in some few years to come, there's one personal observation. I've realized that since Jerusalem was declared as a, 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 the capital, of Israel, which was a prophetic event or the prophetic calendar. Prophetic events are coming to pass and they are unfolding very fast. Some of them that in our minds we thought will happen three years, five years, fifteen years to come, they are all being fulfilled within a matter of months. And it shows that things are being shortened in the realm of the spirit. The coming of the Lord is indeed close. Brother sister, look up for your redemption is near and a prophet of this age he says something which is always on my heart he said that it's compulsory it is necessary in fact it's by force that everyone should get the holy ghost and he said now 
now, not the future. Before you can go to the rapture. So brother, sister, in this trying time, there's only one group that will be able to sustain if we leave. And it's only the bridal group. They are few in numbers. Very few. For majority of the people on this earth are hypocrites. They are only parasites. But only few people can go through this train because many people are going to give up. And I advise somebody stand. It's not time to depend on mother or father or sister or anybody. In this time that are ahead of us, not only what is happening in 2020, but most things are going to happen afterwards. You must stand with the word. For people will assure you that there's salvation somewhere. There's a solution this way. There's a solution that way. Please don't go. Stay with the word. Stay with the message books. Read them. Read the Bible. It will bring you back to the Bible. Which is our absolute, our compass, as the prophet said. And when you stay with it, nobody can deceive you. Stay with the word. There are two things that can happen to humanity. It's either you die or you are saved. Brother, sister, my advice to everyone is that, as Daniel and his group said, in Daniel 3, 15 to 17, which is something I stand on, when they were going to the fiery furnace, they said something. They said, indeed, they know that their God can save them. But even if he doesn't save them, he said they will not bow to the image. And that is the time, this is the time we need to say this. Because people will come with a lot of solutions. Please, stay with the word. If death will have to take us at this time, oh my, oh my, we are ready to go. But you can be only ready when you have the Holy Spirit. Brother and sister, we are onward Christian soldiers marching on to war. I was telling my wife this morning as I was leaving the house, as I am a Christian soldier, military man, I don't stay at home. We must feed the flock wherever they are. And therefore, whatever it means, if we need to rest to feed the flock, we must rest and feed the flock. Until the Lord says, we must come and rest. So we are in duty. Whether there's a lockdown or a lockup or a long in between, we are still in duty. And therefore, we are putting everything in place to come to you live on Tuesday evening and on Thursday evening. And also on Sunday morning and on one FM, we are in serial negotiations. We don't want any cut off anywhere. We must come to you. We'll do everything if we need to even pull protocols from heaven. To be able to come to you, we have to do that. Because this is our duty to you and our duty to the saints of the living God. Just be in prayer and support us in prayer. I know the Lord will help us. Beloved, last week Sunday, we started a series on um, prelude to the oncoming storm. A prelude to an oncoming storm. And as I said, people are asking whether this is a great tribulation. Please, no, there's nothing near like that. We are not in great tribulation at all. If you are in the great tribulation, it means that the rapture has already happened. And so far, you are on earth and I'm on earth. The rapture has not happened, brother, sister. But we are the bride. Believe it. Have faith in God. Believe that you are part of the bridal team. But what is happening is a prelude to the oncoming storm. And I explained last week that before a woman will give birth, in all circumstances, we have something we call birth pains. That a woman must go through. The woman must go through birth pains. Abdominal pains will come. Pelvic pains will come. The back pains she will receive. Sometimes they feel very uncomfortable. Then the next thing will follow. The waters that the baby is around the baby will break. The waters will come out. Then blood will come. Then the rare event, which is life that we are waiting for, will not come forth. And also we explain using nature that before there's a storm anywhere, the skies will get darkened. Sometimes the stars will get vanished. You will not see the stars. Furthermore, there will be lightning here and there will strike from the west to the east. Some will strike here and there. And then the next thing that will follow is a wind. The wind will blow. And as the wind blows, then the rare event, that is the storm. In the mind of God, being merciful and ever gracious, he has always placed something in nature for nature to know that a storm is coming. 
and I use examples of animals. How God has equipped animals, bears, when there's a storm coming, and they begin to see the sign, the smell, from afar, all of them flow very low, and they all go to hide. I also let you know that you see sheep, they all cluster together because they want warmth, they want comfort from one another. And I told you that in the village, you see chicken and hen making noise all over the place. That it means that an oncoming storm is on the way. And they go into hiding. Amen. And God has also given humans a means to know that a storm is coming. But one thing is certain and that, what, that, what, that is the truth. In every storm, whether the sign shows or not, there are two groups of people that will always be on earth. One group will take precautions and go and seek for refuge. Another group will brave the storm and they will not take any precautions. Even if they are warning signs, they will feel they know it all. They feel that they are everything. They don't need God. They don't need anything. They will fear the storm. I don't know if they, they die a miserable death. Or they lose every property. It's only those who recognize that there's an oncoming storm and they have to take precautions according to the noise of the weatherman because you hear weather forecasts all over. In America and the developed countries, not like in Ghana, before there's a storm, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane whatever, as they call them, the weatherman in America will sound days, sometimes five days, one week, two weeks. That's an oncoming catastrophic storm. They say it on television and in countries, areas that the storm will hit very hard. They are able to warn them to pack. Firemen will go there, but they are always recalcitrant people. Some people will move to safety, but others will stay in the storm. The storm will come, devastating them, destroying everything, killing their families. Families have been wiped out because of stubbornness. And that's how it is. So we use the natural to tie the spiritual. For the natural, tie the spiritual, and the spiritual times the natural. There's an oncoming storm, which is a spiritual storm, which is ahead of us. How long would it take? I can't tell because I don't know. But what, one thing I know, which is certain, is that through the message of the hour, through the prophet messenger to this age, we know the prophetic calendar from day one to the last day. And therefore, we know events upon events, what is going to happen, what we are waiting for next, and how things are going to be by the grace of God and through his message, that has brought it back to the correct interpretation of the Bible, we are able to know the prophetic calendar. When it will happen, I cannot tell. But how it's going to go about, we can give you the scenario we know. And therefore, for us, we warn, we advise, we plead that please look up for your redemption is near. It's time for trimming our lambs. For the message that would trim our lambs and put us aglow, the message has come forth. The shout has come forth, brother, sister. It is time. The midnight cry has sounded. And there's no more midnight cry. There's not going to be any, uh, 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 any shout anywhere. It has sounded. The message has been delivered. The food is stored. It's ready. We are picking them. We are feeding on them. Eagles have gathered around fresh meat. Amen. Amen. So it's time for us to get prepared. It's ongoing time. And there's nothing we can do. The bride is waiting for the husband and the groom to come. Very soon, we are going to meet him. But are you prepared? Am I prepared? That's the question. Beloved, I've told you there's an oncoming storm. But before there's an oncoming storm, spiritual oncoming storm, there's always a prelude. So we are going to read the book of Matthew, chapter 24, as we look at some events that the Lord spoke about, that must happen. Matthew 24, let's read from verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And the disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. So Jesus had went out and then he was sitting somewhere. And then the disciples came and that time Solomon's temple was there. Very beautiful, decorated. 
with powerful stones, the po most powerful stones on earth that you can think of, were used to decorate the, uh, 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 the temple. And people were admiring when you go inside, there were gold, there were diamonds, all kind of things that you can think about. Vessels of gold were inside. And therefore, it was a privilege to even be in the temple. And that was the pride of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were just privileged to be in the temple. Meanwhile, they were fools. They could not see a simple sign when our Lord Jesus Christ came on earth. That the Bible told them prophetically will be born at Bethlehem. They knew he was born in Bethlehem. That a virgin would conceive. They knew all the signs, but they were unable to see that he was a, a, a Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So as they were talking about, to him about the beauty of the temple, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? In other words, don't look at these things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here on one stone upon another. That shall, be, that shall not be thrown down. So Jesus was now re-echoing what prophet Daniel spoke in the book of Daniel chapter 9. What will happen to the temple? Daniel 9, if you read, Daniel spoke about how the temple was going to uh, come down, how the prince um, that we all know that prince, small p because there's another confusion the message about it, that's a Roman empire, will come and destroy that temple, so Jesus Christ was just echoing this, that that temple that you are seeing, Solomon temple, is going to be pulled out and every stone will be thrown down and this prophetic uh, statement from Jesus Christ was fulfilled in AD 70 by Titus and his group and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, end of the world, end of the world? So two things. Signs of your coming, and then the end of the world. They are two separate things. There are three comings of the Lord. We know the first has, has already taken place. He came as a lamb to redeem you and I. Oh, glory be to Jesus. That's why today I can stand here as a seed of Abraham, as a redeemed seed from a typical village like Okrentumi and Trapiasi, that today I can stand here as a Gentile bride and I can speak to you. You are also saved wherever you are. Beloved, have faith in God that you are a bride. So he came. We are waiting for a second coming of the Lord. Then he's coming again to take away his wife, his bride, me and I, me and you, all of us. The Lord is coming one day. The world will not see him. This is what we call the secret coming of the Lord. It's very secret. Nobody will know. Nobody will see. The only people that will be privileged to see the Lord coming is only the bride. You and I, filled with the Holy Spirit, having the brighter message and the brighter dress and the brighter character. We are the only ones that will see him coming. And when we see him, we shall be like him. I said, when we see him, we shall be like him. Within a twinkle of an eye, within seconds and minutes, those who are alive, if I'm privileged to be alive, but if I'm gone, oh, the dead in Christ will rise first, and the living, oh, that will be the white virgins, will change within seconds. And within a twinkle of an eye, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, will be like the Lord, we will meet him in the air, and so shall we be with him forever and ever. So the second coming of the Lord, we are waiting. So it applies to the second coming. That's what we are waiting for at the moment. Then the third coming of the Lord is when he is coming during the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. The most terrible day that will happen on earth. That's where all eyes will see him. We must be able to decode the prophetic calendar very well to understand these things. The second coming of the Lord, nobody will see him except the bride. We are going for the marriage supper, Revelation chapter 19. We are going for the marriage supper with him. It's a quiet event. It's a secret event. We'll go. Nobody will know. And then off we go. The third coming will be during the day of the Lord. When the Lord is coming to pass judgment on earth. And that's when we'll enter into the millennium. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto them, we are reading the book of Matthew chapter 24. We are in the verse 4. And he said, take heed that no man deceive you. That's the first statement. <laughs> take heed, brother. Take heed, take heed sister. 
In this trial moment, there are going to be a lot of messages. Lies and propaganda. The prophetic people are going to come with a lot of prophet. What you should do to sustain. What you should do to survive. What you should do to live. Brother, take heed. For deception is coming on the way coming. And at this moment, take heed because there's going to be great delusion. Where people are going to be shifted from the truth that will be revealed to this age. Unto another truth. Second Eden. Satan's Eden. Satan is going to lead people into his Eden. So, look up and don't be deceived. And Jesus was warning, take heed wherever you are. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Is it happening? Yes. Deceiving, deception is going on all over. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Has it happened? It has over happened. All these prophetic events are supposed to happen. And therefore, you cannot stop wars. You cannot say, I'm trusting and praying to stop wars in the world. It is impossible until you don't understand the scriptures. So when I see the denomination people praying and fasting that there should be no war, and you see their pastors, the way they preach it, the way they pray, I say, it is impossible, brother. You don't understand the Bible. Wars will continue. Wars will go on. Because why? They must fulfill the prophetic calendar. Hallelujah. See ye, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Prelude. These are all preludes. Commodies. Commodies. Yes. Why you see people dying through wars? He said, no, 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 no. Don't think I'm coming. <laughs> they are all commodies. They are all events. Herodin, the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said, for nation shall rise against nation. Is it happening? Is that over happened? Nations, Israel against other world, America against Iran. Oh, in Af Africa, Africa, you can't even talk about it. It is all over Russia pursuing other countries, Syria with other nations. It's all over the place. All these things have happened and continue to happen in greater magnitude. Amen. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Hey. I say somebody wake up. There's going to be famine all over the world. There has been famines. But if you are waiting for the greatest famine. They wait. Famine. The word of God. I'm telling you. Physical and spiritual. Two. Amen. What you are hearing me do here today brother. Take it serious. For very soon you will not see me here again. Very soon, the, the political authorities all over the world have tried it and it has proven that they can do it. That they can tell the church to keep quiet and the church will keep quiet. They can tell it to sleep and everybody will sleep. They've tried it. A time is coming very soon. Oh, they would say nobody goes to church except you believe in the doctrines of the political authorities. I'm telling you. At that time, brothers and sisters, there will not be any more gathering. I'm telling you, I said, there will not be any more gathering. You cannot hold this Bible. So somebody, get prepared. I'm asking people today, church members, where are our pastors? Where are they? Now, quarantine. Everybody is hiding. So, if you did not take the word that we preached five years ago, I've been the pastor of the church. I preached and I preached and I preached. If you are somebody who are playing church, this is the time. Nobody knows when this event will end. God is doing his own thing. And nobody knows when it end. Our prayer that should end by tomorrow morning. Even, even the next second, I pray. But nobody knows. He is holding the world in his hands. He is determining things. He can decide to prolong it for one year. He can decide to prolong it for the next two years. He can say tomorrow it will end. Brother, sister, if he should prolong... The word that we preach to you is what you must feed on. If you took nothing in, nothing will come out of you. Because you can only produce what is inside you. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. And pestilences. It didn't say pestilence. Hallelujah. Somebody underline. He said there's going to be what? Pestilences. Plural. If you don't know, then I'm telling you. If you think coronavirus is a deadly sickness. 
that has shook the world, then wait. I'm not a prophet of doom. But we are talking prophetic things. This is biblical prophecies. I said, if you think coronavirus is so deadly, it has shaken the world, it has taken the world economy, today people cannot move to do anything. Hallelujah. Yes, petty traders are hiding. Barbers are hiding. Because everybody is afraid to barber. I have not barbered my hair for two weeks now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So there is going to be pestilences. Sometime the one that may be coming, you have no idea. This one is better. Of course, it's on the prophetic calendar. It must happen like that. Amen. But look up. Your redemption is near. Amen. And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. It means that nothing, it, what you see, this thing that we are seeing, it says nothing. They are beginning. <laughs> they are beginning. They are prelude. The rare event hasn't even started yet. So what you are seeing, that the whole world is in darkness now, closed down, is just nothing, brother, sister. The ministers, this is when I've told people, this is when we must come out with a prophetic calendar and let people know that, get, you see, people must get prepared. People are realizing people are getting prepared for Corona. But people must get prepared for even harder times. Yes. Trying times. Where there's going to be financial famine. Money is going to be a problem. <laughs> it's only those who have the Holy Spirit who can survive. Amen. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I'm telling you, look. You'll be surprised. The churches that are worshipping, that are being arrested. If you are doing investigations as to who went and reported to the authorities that they were worshipping, you'll be surprised there were people who were worshipping in the church. Somebody took video and sent the video to the authorities and say, we are worshipping, come and arrest us. Brother, you have not seen anything yet. A time is coming where your own wife will be afraid to sleep on the same bed with you. A time is coming when husbands will betray their wives. Children will call police because you are reading the Bible. So when today you had the Bible in abundance on our phone, there's a Bible. I have one here, I have one in my office, I have plenty in my home. Please, take advantage and read the word. A time is coming the word will not be in your hands again. It will be in your heart. The little that you have learned, the one that you have stored, is what you have to live on. So brother, sister, amen. Hold on. Hallelujah. Today the message books are there everywhere. They are chips. On our phones. And the click is there. A time is coming. That sort of way, they will delete it from the world. You won't get the message anywhere to read. So read enough within these two weeks that you are quarantined. Don't eat too much food. Read. It's an opportunity. Lazy Christians have taken over the world. Read. This is the time for you to read. Look up. For your redemption is near. And because iniquity shall abound, so the love of many shall was cold. But he that shall endure, listen, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Hallelujah. It's only those who can endure to the end is only those who will be saved. And this is, we are talking about the prelude. All these signs are supposed to come and they will come in diverse ways. Sicknesses, it will come. After the sickness have come and gone, financial difficulties, perilous times, it will come and go. Wickedness, that's how it is. This one comes, it goes. The next one comes, it goes. Earthquakes all over the place. Wars upon wars. It will come. There are all signs that will lead the world to a, a time that brother, sister. Hey, if you don't know your Bible, if you don't know the word. If the spirit of God is not in you, brother, you will see pastors who will go naked on the streets. You will see pastors who will do a U-turn and they will be using rosaries. I'm telling you. You will see anti of pastors. I'm telling you. Somebody mad this on the wall. I'm not a prophet. I said, anytime ago, many people are denying this message already. 
Many people don't want to hear anything about the message. And yet they say they are message preachers. They would give up. People would go and join the denominations. Hallelujah. Because you must eat. Amen. If you don't preach, how are you going to eat? Now, for three weeks now, the church members are home. They don't have money to pay tithe and offering. Pastors will have to now use means <laughs> to get their daily food. You must turn your church to a denomination church. To a Cali church. Hallelujah. You must change to become a Cali preacher. I'm telling you. I said things are going to change in this message. Times are not the same. Times are not the same. And times will not be the same. Amen. Amen. And let me say something. Our God, our Lord, he does nothing without a warning. And that, that is his nature. That's one thing I love about him. There is nothing that our Lord will do without a warning. In Amos, Amos says, our God does nothing. Nothing on earth. Nothing without revealing to his prophets. So before a storm comes, in the natural, they are weathermen. They will be on television blasting. They will be on everywhere blasting, telling you, prepare. A storm is coming. A storm is coming from the east. Those from the east run to the west. A storm is coming from the west. Those in the west run to the south. Amen. So you see people running. Those who are wise, they will run. And they announced the lockdown. I was watching the news yesterday. Oh, Jesus. How people are flying away from Accra. Accra. People are running away from Accra. People are parking. I say, yes, sir. Oh, they are going to hiding. Because they know that a storm is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people who are refused to buy food. I, I call some people who have you say, oh, I don't have anything. I'm not burdened. You see, they are not prepared. Although they know that there's a lockdown coming, they are not prepared. But a wise person will prepare small. Hallelujah. Amen. So God has always used weathermen to announce about his coming. Ezekiel chapter 33. Let us read Ezekiel 33. From verse 1. Again, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman, if when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. And that is exactly what we are doing right now. The major person to bring the shout of an oncoming storm, he has brought it, is gone. The prophet messenger has shouted. The message has gone for many years ago. He has left the scene. But there are watchmen that the Lord has prepared, the fivefold ministry, which are on the land. And the Lord has caused some of us to give you a warning that there's an oncoming storm. The whole nation, all preachers, are now focusing on coronavirus. But coronavirus under my feet. Amen. Our attention should not be distracted by coronavirus. We should, this is the time to preach for the people to know that indeed there's an oncoming storm. For coronavirus will go, another one will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Ebola came. It has gone. We thought that was the end. Corona has come. I know when it ends, people will think it's the end. Another one will come whether you like it or not. But that's the Bible. But the watchmen must sound the trumpet. And I'm sounding the trumpet to somebody right now. That there's an oncoming storm. Get prepared. Then whosoever, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. And whosoever is listening to me right now, brother, sister, elderly man, elderly sister, a young man, a young brother, whoever you are an infant, so far as you can hear the sound of my voice and you can understand the words that I'm speaking, if you hear these words and don't prepare for the oncoming storm and the storm comes and takes you, your blood shall be upon your whole head. That's yes, the word of God. There's nothing you can do about it. He shall be shall deliver his afraid of men than God. I'm repeating it. I say I've seen that men are afraid of men than God. When the ministers are saying, Wash your hands, oh Jesus, 
We wash our hands thousand times in a day. It's coming from man. Because a thing that will protect you. When they say, should you hand sanitizers? Hand sanitizers are finished. Everywhere I see the old, the rich, the poor, who don't even have money to buy, some are buy a petition. Somehow, a hand sanitizers. They are heeding to the warnings of man. Amen. When they say social distancing, honestly, people are not allowing people to get close to them. I've heard stories of husbands and wives who are now doing distancing, social distancing, on the bed. Amen. If some can even construct a wall to divide the bed into two, I'm sure they will do it. And people are obedient. In their homes, you are washing your hands. In your cars, you are cleaning yourself. But the word of God is coming. And says, stop fornication. Oh, no way. You are keeping a woman in your room. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop drinking. It is the time people are using alcohol. Because they have heard that. They say alcohol can kill the, uh, 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 the virus. That alcohol can kill the virus outside. That alcohol cannot kill the virus inside. It's only the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But people are drinking alcohol because they want the virus to die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. There's an oncoming storm. People are prepared for the physical. People want to live on earth. Amen. And therefore everybody is getting prepared. When the president says stay at home, everybody stay at home. When the word of God says stay at home, don't go to disco, you go. Don't go to disco, you go. Why? Because it's coming from God. You have no fear for God. Hallelujah. There's an oncoming storm. Trust and obey. It's only those who obey who will be able to get saved. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. By his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. This puts the church in a great position. And I said that this is the time all message churches, everyone who says you have been called by God, you must blow the trumpet. Sound it. Let the people take a decision. Those who want to obey, those don't want to obey. I know some are not going to obey. The quarantine is an opportunity for you to continue sinning because your pastor is not there. Because no church member can visit you at home. So this is a time for you to masturbate. Go ahead. Hallelujah. By this time, people are communicating with their girlfriends. They are telling them how they are prepared for them. After the coronavirus and the Lord has saved me, say, sir, I'm going to show you my power. You are drinking no giddy giddy. Kofi don't throw. Orman Sakura. I love your bitters. You are drinking. You are taking pictures. Your girlfriend. Showing him that after corona, you come hard on her. May the Lord have mercy upon you. For you know not what is ahead of you. Hallelujah. Am I complicated to somebody right now? Am I preaching to somebody at home? Hallelujah. So thou, so thou, O oh son of man, I have sent thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O oh wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou does not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. By his blood will thou require at thy hand. There's too much wickedness. Somebody called me yesterday from Kaswa. He listened to me on radio and said, Pastor, Kaswa here, where I say, Gary is selling for 20 Ghana cities. 20 Ghana cities. Sister, brother, how much did you buy Gary? You bought it pre-corona era. You bought it for two cities. You were selling it for three cities. Post-corona. <laughs> you are selling for 20 Ghana. Oh my, oh my. Hallelujah. Wickedness all over the place. Some are selling fake goods. I saw somebody have arrested. Hand sanitizer. Fake. Tapping time. Mixed with alcohol. And people are depending on this because they feel that when they wash their hands, they know they are safe. Meanwhile, you know that it's tapping time mixed with apetite that you are selling. May the Lord have mercy upon you. Wickedness is abounding. This is a time people are thinking about themselves. I'm telling you frankly. I'm saying that this is a time the church must give back. 
We are taught too much tithe and offering. They are poor among the church. Yes, this is the time we must give back. It's a time of giving. Brother, you have bought 50 bars of rice, you and your two children. It's a time to give back. Give back to somebody. For there are too many poor people among us. Hallelujah. So we are here, the watchman. We are sounding the trumpet. The prophet messenger has come. The shout has gone on and somebody must obey. If you don't obey, the prophetic calendar cannot be changed. Nobody can turn the world upside down again. Nobody can turn things around. What is happening is going to happen. There are going to be perilous times, difficult times, more famine, more sicknesses, more diseases, more troubles, more financial difficulties. Whether you like it or not, God, that says the Lord. We cannot change it. It takes those who have the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm shouting that it's compulsory necessary by force. It is. For you to have the Holy Spirit. Brother and sister, let me tell you something. Look, we are at the edge, the very, very last end on the prophetic calendar of the Gentiles. Seven church ages have come to pass. We are in the last church in the Lodisha church age. The prophet messenger has sounded. The trumpet has sounded. It is gone long ago. And the message is come back to the word. Come back to the word. Come back to the word. Not come back to theology. No, 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 no. Come back to the word. Come, because that's the message of the hour. Come back to the word. Stay with the Bible. Get the revealed word. It's only when you have a revelation. He has come and gone. Majority of the prophetic things that were predicted have all come to pass. There's no more time. The Gentile age is gradually going. In 1948, Israel, the fig tree became a nation state. 17 years and over. Nobody thought Israel would be a nation state. But one day, that prophecy was fulfilled. Nobody thought Jerusalem would be declared one day at the capital city of Israel. But one day, it came to pass. Majority of things are happening. Today, what we are all waiting for is a temple mount. Israel will grab it very soon. They will grab it very soon, whether I like it or not. And it's going to be imminent. It's just on the way. A, the process is ongoing. When they grab it on the prophetic calendar, we are waiting for that great war between Israel, Russia, and the Arab world. It's imminent. It will, work. it will come out very soon. Bride of Christ, you have nothing to wait for again. Wait for the Lord. Trim your lambs. Trim your lambs. For time is no more. I'm here to advise somebody because we are on radio, on an online radio, and I know you use a lot of data. Uh, we don't want to waste too much of your time. So we have decided to make our sermon very short. But the coming weeks, uh, we'll come to you with more sermons. Brother and sister, stay tuned. This is the only medium that the Lord has given us. And this is how we are going to come to you uh, from now. Even if there's a total lockdown and we cannot move, I'm assuring you of something. By the grace of God, because of the great team we have in this church, um, our IT team, they have come to install the radio station in my home. So from my house, I'll come to you live from wherever you are. The most important thing is that please, get the app. Get the app. Go to Google Play Store. Download the original web radio. The original web radio. Download it and store it on your phone. And please, just get connected. Anytime. 24 hours, we are online. On Tuesday evening, we are here. On Thursday evening, we are here. 6 p.m., 6 p.m. each. On Sunday morning, 9 a.m., we'll come to you live. Even if you are not on Facebook, as for the radio, it will be on. If you are not on Facebook, the radio will be on. Get connected. On Sunday evening, if you are unable to go to the number one FM studio, we will find another means to get you on the same studio. Yes, today, technology has no limitation. So please stay in tune. We are also pleading, please, in this moment, it's time for revival. Family revivals, Individual revivals, stay with the word. Please stay strong. Look up to Jesus. Okay? I said many prophetic words are moving in the skies. Don't depend on anybody. Those of you who are depending 24 hours on TB Joshua for the fulfillment of his prophecy on Friday, you see that it has swept you. Yes, a fiasco. Nobody can turn the prophetic calendar. I'm telling you, these prophetic events have already been done, it's sealed in the realm of the spirit. It must come to pass. 
and they have timing and it's only God who can stop them. Stay in line. Stay in line. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. I wanted to sing that song. Can you give me the hymn number? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Give me the hymn number. Very fast. As we bring. It's 10.30 already. As we bring our sermon to an end. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hymn 77. Hymn 77. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Open your hymn books wherever you are. church entire church we want to thank you so much honestly for your great contributions your offerings and your tithes in fact they are saying that they are surprised they are shocked at the way church members are contributing towards the sustaining of the ministry indeed may the lord bless you wherever you are may the hand of the lord be upon you i know we are in difficult times but we need to sustain the ministry by sustaining the ministry. While you see me standing, there are people who are working here. We need airtime. We need uh, things are working on one FM. We must pay to be online. They are not doing charity work over there. And in fact, we don't have any headquarters. So we depend on you fully. Please continue to send your contributions. We are also up, uh, pleading to the entire ministry. Church members, I know they are rich and they are poor. There's nothing we can do. The Lord Jesus said, they said, the poor you have them among you always. Although I refuse to be one, also refuse to be one. But whether we like it or not, there are people who don't have what some of us maybe we have. Please, if you have rice, if you have 
base. If you are Tom Brown, if you are sugar, if you have oats, whatever you have, and you want us to have it, please just call the trustee board, call us, and then we'll come, we'll do the arrangements, we'll come and pick them. We thank God the president don't say motorbikes will not run. Motorbikes can run. So, so far as motorbikes can run, all of us will turn into motor riders. Amen. We'll call people now. Amen. So, just call. We will come and pick them using the available method. And then those church members who are vulnerable, who cannot even have food to eat, we will distribute it to them. We have already started. We thank some of you who have donated. And we God bless you so much. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for this hour. Indeed, we are very happy. And we are rejoicing in you jesus christ because we know we are hidden you and once we are hidden you we are protected we have no spirit of fear from church members take away the spirit of fear for that is a major tool the enemy is using now and put us in the faith father those who are veering off the pride oh jesus bring us back online let our hair that have been cut off, let it begin to grow again, like Samson. And we say, Lord, one more time, Lord. One more time, Lord. Let us grow in you, Father. Let this period be a period that we will seek for the Holy Spirit. That we will stand on your word, Father. We will demonstrate our sons and daughters of God to the world. That in the midst of challenges, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We will sing your praise, Lord. We thank you for what you have done for us. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you and shalom to the bride.